Hey, and welcome to another Farewell North devlog, where I share my progress developing my game about restoring color to the world. The last few weeks came with a sudden rush of inspiration, and I'm really happy with how development has been going. I've made a number of seemingly smaller changes, such as bringing the camera in closer to the player and increasing the field of view, in order to give the world a larger feel and to increase the perceived movement speed, just as it would from a dog's perspective, to adding fur to give Chesley a fluffier feel and to really give him that classic border collie look. Photo mode is mostly complete as well, that's something that's been sitting half-baked for a long time, and it's just a nice bit of work to get off my to-do list. I want to do a UI overhaul for the whole game at some point, but for now it's functionally complete and I'm really happy with the results. There's a good deal of functionality in there, and I'm excited to see all the photos you guys will take. One of the more exciting changes for me personally is that I added the ability to have varying themes for the uncolored world and to transition smoothly between them, which will help give areas a unique identity and avoid having the uncolored world become monotonous. Experimenting with different effects also gave me some gameplay ideas, which is a bit of a surprising outcome, but more on that in a future devlog. The audio design is progressing well, with John Consolakis paying so much attention to all the little details, with new sounds and polishing a lot of his existing work in the game. I don't share a lot of the audio in the devlogs, because we really think it's best to experience it in-game, but it's been a real hit throughout all the playtests, and it consistently scores as one of the top features in all the feedback forms, and I'm really happy that it's just getting better and better. There have been tons of these seemingly minor changes, but they're all really helping to solidify the feel of the game. But really the biggest thing I want to share is that I've made substantial improvements to what I think was the weakest part of the game up until now. Before we get into that though, I do want to say that I get a lot of comments asking how I learned game dev or Unity, and beyond that, how to just get started. And I wanted to let you know that my buddy Thomas Brush actually has a free 2D game kit for you below in the description to get you going. Thomas is a full-time indie game dev and has released games on pretty much every platform. He actually used this exact game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and even played it with PewDiePie in front of 5 million viewers, which is totally crazy. It's completely free, no gimmicks, just his treat to you. So if you're interested in that, make sure you click the link below to get the free game kit and a head start on your 2D projects. So as it was, I felt canoeing was okay, and I particularly liked the control scheme using the trigger buttons to control the paddle strokes rather than using joysticks, but I still feel like it was certainly lacking compared to the rest of the game. As I started to develop more of the islands, I found myself just wanting to place them directly beside the existing islands, because it felt kind of pointless to put any distance between them and to make the player canoe for more than a few seconds. Rather than feeling like an interesting and distinct part of the gameplay, it almost felt like canoeing was just a bit of a chore and acted more as an interactive loading screen rather than anything actually memorable. Just as a side note, I don't actually use canoeing to hide loading, but it's not a bad idea. Anyways, perhaps the biggest issue is that it had no meaningful interaction with the coloring aspect of the game, which is the main mechanic of Feral North and so it just felt tacked on and not really integrated into the gameplay. In a previous devlog, way back in December of last year, I showed some ocean wisps as a way to incorporate coloring, but I never really felt attached to that idea, and they were removed from the game just as quickly as they were added. Also, while we're here, could we just take a quick second to appreciate how far canoeing has come in the last 12 months? I find it almost painful looking back at this old footage, but I guess it's a good reminder that game development just takes a lot of time and iteration. Anyways, one element of the story that may never actually be told within the game itself, but nevertheless is an important part of my backstory for the human character, is that canoeing and being on the water is something she loves, perhaps even having competed in rowing championships in her college years. It's somewhere she feels at home and at peace, and so I feel it's important to at least demonstrate her passion within the game, even if it's never explicitly told to the player. The coloring mechanic is obviously the central hook of the game, and within the game it represents her emotional state, so it makes a lot of sense that canoeing would bring her happiness and bring color to her world. So I decided that before laying out more of the game world, I need to find a way to bring fun into the canoeing mechanic. For inspiration, I looked at the downhill sand section in Journey, where there's this real feeling of adventure as you rush down the sandy mountain, and the staff riding in Omno, where the staff becomes this agile way to cover large distances. These are obviously much different methods of travel than canoeing, but I still think there are lessons to be learned in the ways that these games made these fun and memorable mechanics that kind of gave a break from the rest of the gameplay. So my goals in this effort were to first make canoeing enjoyable on its own, something that would be memorable and a stretch of gameplay you actually look forward to. Secondly, I needed to incorporate coloring, tying the enjoyment of canoeing into the coloring mechanic of the game. And finally, to provide more to do while canoeing with the ocean having its own secrets to explore. I came up with a few ideas for how to go about this. So rather than jumping straight into one, I decided to spend a couple days mulling them over. And I started first working on some schools of fish that you'd be able to see while you're coloring the ocean. Maybe not a priority, but hey, it was fun to work on. I streamed this on Twitch, and the idea was that the schools of fish would appear around the canoe and they would race alongside you, adding a purely visual enhancement to the canoeing stretches while bringing some life to the ocean. It was a fun technical challenge, as I did all the animation through vertex displacement in the shader, 
which is an insanely performant way to do animations as long as the animation can be expressed mathematically. It's not always easy to get right, but I did get there eventually. Just briefly, because I think it is interesting, at a very high level, the way I implemented this was that each type of animal can have up to four animation states, represented by this 4x4 matrix, which contains the elapsed time and the current weight of each animation, and two additional properties that can be unique to the animation. I then run through all four animation states, which again are unique to the creature type, so you can see here the fish has just one animation state for swimming, the birds have two for flapping and soaring, and each animation state is simply a formula to try to represent that animation, so you can see here this is the function for the fish swimming. The result of each animation function is the vertex offset of that movement at that current point in time. So back in the main function, you add these all up and you weigh them by the weight in the matrix, and that gives you the blended position of the vertex between all four animation states, and allows you to control the weights from the C-sharp layer on the CPU within the game logic, so you can transition smoothly between the different states. So why am I telling you all this? Well, the point of this is that this allows for really quite massive numbers of animated creatures, way more than I'll ever actually need, without impacting performance. I also updated all the bird and butterfly animations to use the same system as part of this redesign, and the performance impact is massive. So here I have 1,000 birds from before the changes using basic bone animations, and these 1,000 birds translate to over 3,000 draw calls and run at only 20 to 30 frames per second. With the new approach, that's down to only 15 draw calls and 70 frames per second. If you're not a developer, just know that draw calls are essentially the communication between the CPU and the GPU, and they can be one of the worst hits to your game's performance. This approach also saves dozens of game objects per animal since you no longer need all the bones, which further saves memory and CPU resources as well, so it's really quite significant. Anyways, I can have way more fish and birds than I ever really need, which is great. And by the time the fish were done, I decided how I wanted to approach the canoe gameplay overhaul. So there's always been a sort of secret optimal canoe stroke rhythm, just based on the maths of how the canoe movement is calculated, but it's never really told to the player in any visible way, and was instead something you might naturally discover as you played, but you also might not. Even if you did find that rhythm though, aside from slightly optimal movement speed, you wouldn't really see or feel much different. So the first thing I did was accentuate this optimal rhythm by nearly doubling the maximum movement speed, but only if you're chaining paddle strokes in that optimal rhythm. This immediately gives a slightly less realistic and more arcadey feel, but to me it's a worthy trade-off as it's just much more fun moving at these higher speeds. Of course, if players don't know about this, then it just feels random, so I added these small circular indicators at the end of the paddle stroke to coincide with that optimal timing, and if you paddle on the side of the indicator during its visibility, you'll get a drastic speed increase. I still need to figure out how to handle the look of these, as they're basically white on white right now on the horizon, so I don't think players would actually notice them as they are right now, but that's always a struggle with the uncolored world. Let me know if you have any ideas for how these should look, but for now they're basically just placeholders so I can see what I'm doing. So as long as you continue to chain these optimal strokes together, you can roughly double your movement speed, but if you miss one then your speed will drop back down to the old maximum, which is quite slower paced. It's not terribly difficult, but it does introduce a sort of rhythm to the canoeing that I think is quite effective. I think it's a good start to make canoeing more enjoyable, but there's still much more to do here. So next I needed a way to tie colouring into the canoeing, so I simply added a sphere of colour coming from the canoe, as long as you chain these optimal strokes together. As you can see, as colour comes out from the canoe, you'll see the fish in the water beneath you, well worth a couple days spent on that, and it also allows me to incorporate the colouring aspects from the rest of the game. Remember that the colour represents the human character's emotional state, and getting into that rhythm, to me at least, is really one of the most enjoyable aspects of canoeing, so it feels like a great fit to me. The core prototype of this was done in a day or two, and felt much better already, but it took several more days to add all the polish to really achieve the full results. One issue I had with Unity's standard animation event system is that they don't really work reliably when blending between animations, and timing is really critical here as it's all about that rhythm of the animation, so I spent a good deal of time fixing this by reading the raw animation frames, and timing the stroke indicators perfectly to the paddle animation keyframe data. I'll spare you the details, you can screenshot if you're interested, but I'm glad I spent the time as it's much better off now. I also added some particle effects so that the indicators burst into water droplets when you successfully time a stroke, further adding that feel of speed as the droplets rush past you in the camera, and I also tuned the camera movement so that the canoe can get slightly ahead of the camera, and altogether I'm really happy with how it's shaping up, and it's giving a sense of speed and enjoyment to me. I'm having a lot of fun canoeing around and exploring the ocean, and I think players will as well. I've actually also started adding some ocean-specific interactions, which would be great for achievements and bonus content. To be honest, I'm actually enjoying it so much that I somewhat elongated the first canoe sequence from the demo, just because it felt good to get up to top speed, to see all the fish and the particles, and I'm excited to add some optional mini-islands for you to go out discover. I might even add a simple high-level map so you can see the whole archipelago from a bird's eye view, and to help you kind of explore and see what sections of the world have had colour permanently restored. 
As I was working on this though, I did realize another issue that wasn't clear to me before, and there's still something missing. So up until now, all the story and progression takes place on the islands, and the canoeing stretches never really advance the plot, which kind of further detaches them from the rest of the game. So even though she's not the player character, the human is really the main character of the game, and canoeing is the one time you play as her, so her emotion coming through in the coloring is great, but it would be even better to have more for her to do. For the rest of the game, I have this whole custom-built NPC behavior system where I can design cutscenes or script out gameplay sequences, and I really use this to plot out just about everything that happens in the game, including all the human characters' actions, but the canoeing never actually integrated with this, and so it was completely detached from all this tooling they have for the rest of the game. So as part of this, I finally built that integration, and now I can add more complex behaviors during the canoeing sequences. So you can see here just a really small example. The first time the player ever canoes through this box, it's going to trigger an NPC behavior, which in this case is just a line of dialogue. It's just a small thing in this example, but it wasn't possible before. And even just little bits of dialogue like this bring a lot of extra life to the canoeing that was missing before. Now that it's all hooked up, I have more flexibility in the level design of the oceans, so I'm excited to see what I can come up with here. If you have any ideas for story or gameplay elements that would work best during the canoeing, let me know down below. So overall, I think it's feeling much more integrated into the game than it was before, while also feeling like it has its own kind of memorable identity that's separate from the core gameplay, so I'm really happy with how it's coming together. I'm excited to see if players will have more to say about canoeing in future playtests, as it's pretty much always been neglected in the feedback, which I take to mean it probably wasn't memorable enough to comment on. Anyways, it's going to be a wrap for this one though, and perhaps for the year, so just in case I'd like to wish you all a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. Your support here on YouTube has been incredible this year, both the channel and the game have grown far beyond my expectations, and I'm really excited to see where they go in 2022. While you're here, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't, and consider wishlisting the game on Steam, that's really the best way to show support for your favorite upcoming indie games. Also, let me know what kind of content you guys are looking for in 2022. I'll definitely be keeping the devlogs going, but I'd be interested to see if there's any other kinds of content that you guys want to see. Perhaps I could go into more detail on how I'm offloading animation into the vertex shaders, or even a whole overview of how I'm optimizing the game. So be sure to leave a comment down below, but either way, bye for now, and I'll see you next time.